nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, there's blood meal, bone meal, fish emulsion, the stuff that Carl gave me that's in the bags. What do I do with it all? Oh, hi! It's Jason with Green Country Agroforestry, and today we're going to talk about fertilizers. Top dressing, side dressing, and most importantly, when to fertilize. And maybe a little bit about what fertilizer does for you, or does for your plants. So, come along with me. Let's get to it. Well, as I'm sure most of you are aware, there are three common nutrients that are found in fertilizers. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. What do those do? Well, let's we'll start out with the easy one. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is usually potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, but it could also be sodium nitrate. Eh, usually ammonium nitrate and potassium nitrate are the ones that you find in most of your fertilizers. And what nitrate does is allow you to have plentiful foliage and nice dark green foliage with lots of chlorophyll that can photosynthesize and produce energy for the plants. Now, let me take you around here and point out some examples of plants that have good nitrogen and plants that don't have such good nitrogen. These are leaves of a black bean plant. It's a Phasus vulgaris, and they produce their own nitrogen by forming an association with nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the roots. It gives their leaves this nice dark green appearance. But even so, we still do want to fertilize these because they need phosphorus and potassium as well. This little plant is a butternut squash, and it's not doing very well. You notice how it has a weak stem and very, very pale green vegetation, yellowing of the leaves. It's a sickly plant. It needs some fertilizer. Let's compare this to a properly fertilized, healthy butternut squash plant. Once again, notice nice dark leaves, robust growth, firm stems. This plant's doing just fine. Okay, so that was nitrogen, but what about phosphorus? What is phosphorus good for? Well, phosphorus is used in all different stages of plant development, from root growth to formation of the, the flowers and buds to setting of fruit. It's involved in just about everything. Phosphorus is also important for helping to fight off disease. Let's take a look at this okra plant here. All right, so here we have a healthy okra plant, and right here you see this yellow flower. The plant is currently using phosphorus to make this nice, healthy flower on the okra plant, and that forms these seed pods here. Of course, this is the part of the okra that we eat. So while this plant is in the process of making these flowers and setting the seed pods, making the basically the fruit that we eat from the okra, it needs plenty of phosphorus. Another nutrient that was going to be required in abundance is potassium. And potassium is used for fighting off disease and for developing good, healthy stems on plants. So, let's talk about some of those other terms you may have heard. Top dressing and side dressing. What in the world does all that mean? Simply well, put, top dressing is applying fertilizer after the plants have been planted. It goes on top. It's not mixed into the soil, but is applied on top. Top dressing. What's side dressing? Well, that's a little bit different. Side dressing is also top dressing, but there is a difference. You might be using some kind of fertilizer that is very high in nitrogen, and you don't want to apply it directly to the root zone of your plants. It might damage the plant. So what you do to side dress is, well, well let me show you. Here's a good candidate. I've got this little okra plant here, and next to it is a weed. <laughs> next to it is a, a small butternut squash. Now, what I would want to do if I wanted to side dress these is to dig a small trench around the drip line or perhaps just beyond the drip line of the plant. What is the drip line? Well, that's the point where the outermost edges of the leaves come. So out to here, there's the drip line. So we drew a trench or you can do a circle around a plant just like so. Now, if I wanted to, I could add my fertilizer 
in this little trench right around the outside. A little trench, a little band just outside the drip line. And what this what this will do is encourage the roots of the plant to stretch out beyond the beyond the drip line, beyond this point here, to get to those nutrients. It won't be so close to the roots of the plant that a high level of nitrogen might burn the roots of the plant. It will encourage the plant to grow and develop a better root system. And in general, that's healthier for the plant. A good use of side dressing is for plants that are going to produce a lot of fruit over an extended period of time. Okra is a good example because it produces flowers, fruit, flowers, fruit, flowers, fruit. The seed pods keep setting throughout the, gro gro throughout the growing season. And so using a time release type fertilizer or heavy compost as a side dressing will allow those nutrients to be released to the soil gradually over time, not overpowering or overwhelming the roots of the plant and allowing to, you to get a better harvest out of that plant as the season progresses. There are basically two times in the plant's life cycle when it's going to require some fertilizer. First time is shortly after the plant is germinated from the seedling and it begins putting on its first true leaves. Let me show you up close. Here it is. Here is a seedling black IP that's just sprouted. Let me bring that into focus. There we go. Seedling black IP that's just sprouted. You still see the seed right there, and that's where the seed coat is split. There is still where the seed coat. A bit of the seed left here. And at this point, this plant is going to be consuming the energy in that seed to grow. And it's going to produce a pair of leaves. These are the first leaves, not the true leaves. So we'll have two leaves, but then when more leaves start to form, that's when you add some more fertilizer. Let me get a, a close-up at these, these black eye peas that are down below us here. Okay, I've zoomed in on this, this pea plant here. It's recently sprouted and it's already consumed that bit of the, the pea that was left here. But at the moment, it only has two leaves. These are not the true leaves, but the true leaves are coming. They're appearing in this bud area right here. As these leaves emerge, as is occurring with this plant, it will be time to add fertilizer to the plant. Alright, so this is one of the black bean plants, and you can see the flowers that are here on the stems. This bean is in the middle of flowering. It's also, as you can see from here, in the middle of setting its fruit, these bean pods. Yeah, they have a purple color on them. That's natural for this particular species of black bean. But this is the important part. This is the second time that, you're, that you should be adding fertilizer. Whenever the flowers are forming and, of course, whenever the fruit is setting, you want to add the nutrients so that the plant can have all the help it needs to set good fruit. So, let's go ahead and add some fertilizer. Of course, all of you are, I'm sure, aware of this overgrown area and what I'm growing back here, aside from hopefully. This is where my liquid fertilizer is, and this is the swamp juice that we made a couple of years ago. It is a liquid fertilizer. It is pretty potent, so we want to dilute it to about 20 to 1. So we'll take a half gallon in a five gallon bucket. that with water. Okay. Alright, so I've diluted this with water and filled it up to the line where the, the logo is on the outside of the bucket. I can see that from the middle. I'm just going to go ahead and fill the other bucket to the same line. Okay, now that both buckets have been filled up to the same level, take bucket number one, dump it into bucket number two. Pour it back and forth once just to make sure that we've got everything mixed. It is now at a 10 to 1 ratio.
fill the bucket back up to that line so that we have equal amounts in both buckets. Now we just finished filling these buckets. All right, so we're going to be adding this fertilizer here, it's liquid form, and we're just going to add enough to get the soil wet on the inside of the circle here. This is essentially side dressing. We're going to force the roots to grow inwards. That is about half a can. That's about one gallon. This watering can holds two gallons. So, if I apply one gallon for each of, one, each of these, I'll have to fill the can up five times. There's ten towers of beans that need to be fertilized. Using the watering can to sprinkle a diluted liquid fertilizer in the space on the inside of the plants in the bean tower is an example of both top dressing, because we're applying the fertilizer after the plants have been planted, and side dressing because we're applying it next to the root zone to allow the roots to explore in that direction. Inside the towers, as these plants grow out and fill out with lots of thick, full leaves, shade will be provided to this area at the base, and in that area, the soil will retain moisture much better. It's a better place to add the fertilizer and water. If I add it to the outside, the roots can be encouraged to grow there, but it doesn't retain moisture near as well as the shaded area on the inside does. And well, hey, good people, that's all I've got for you today. As always, if you found the video informative or entertaining, please hit the like button. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Subscribe to the channel, share this video, bang the notification bell. Good people, I will catch you next time.